Oh, and we're live. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Hey there, Reaper peeps. Guess what? This is Anne, and I'm streaming from home today so that we can test our new Pipe in the Remote Painter program. Um, so anytime, so right away, this is a test. <laughs> So if it doesn't work, um, or if anything is weird, the sound is weird, the image is weird, um, it is going to be a different, you know, kind of setup just because my equipment is slightly different from Justin's. Uh, but we're going to hopefully still give you a quality stream. And as long as it's a quality stream, we're great with that. So today we're going to work on uh, an Ankylosaurus, uh, Clubtail, who was just released. One of the dinosaurs from uh, Jason Weeby, who does such great dinos, who makes me want to um, run. What is that? What is the uh, the D&D module, Justin? Is it, um, it's the first expert level module with all the dinosaurs. Gosh, uh, Isle of Dread, there we go. Seeing those made me want to run the Isle of Dread so bad. <laughs> old school module, old, old school. But anyway, we're gonna do that and I'm just gonna work with some washes and we're gonna play around on the dinosaur and hopefully get a good uh, litmus test of how this setup is going to work. And uh, I know you guys are gonna get my feed just a little laggy since we're piping it through Reaper. So if I don't immediately, um, I'm going to assume I'm not going to see like up-to-date chat comments, although I am watching chat. So if I'm a little laggy and responding to you, it's because I got you a little late. Your oh. chat should be pretty quick. And My chat if I be say something, quick. yeah, it's, it seems to be a couple of seconds, but if, as I catch stuff, I'll say it to you in real time in discord too. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody's calling me the bat cave. Jedi Jared. It's not, there aren't many bats here. It's more the dog cave. Cause like Kiri has crashed out on her blanket over there. Um, I don't think she's going to make an appearance today. I'm kind of in, like trying to keep her quiet because if there's like a dog emergency, we have to go to the be right back screen while I rush her outside. So, uh, so we're going to hope that she sleeps through the whole thing. All right. So let's just uh, go right over to our dinosaur and uh, we can start and dive in and, and test all my keys um, and uh, go from there. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi, Traxmar. Hey, everybody. Hey, hi. Hey, David Weir. Yes, let sleeping dogs lie, please. <laughs> I would hate to be the first Reaper stream to have to use a Be Right Back screen. I'm sure it's going to happen sometime, but... All right, so yeah, let's go to Dino Cam. Let's see. Unfortunately, you're going to see my arm, and that's all I'm going to say. Okay, this should be pretty good. We have a Dino Cam. And look, I'm using little plastic things in place of my white palette because, and you guys get to see me still. Look, hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is usually my video setup, um, but we're going to use it for this. Hopefully you enjoy being able to see me talk to you and actually see me paint at the same time. You can give us feedback on that too. So yes, for everybody new, I am streaming from home today. We are doing a test of our uh, new kind of uh, pipe in the painter system at Reaper. Uh, we would like to be able to bring in uh, guest talent without them having to actually fly to Dallas. So I am your uh, your guinea pig for the day. And we're going to paint Mr. Clubtail here, who is uh, 77046. Is that, is that correct, Justin? Uh, based on my information, yes. Or no, it's it's 44076. Oh, 44076. Right, right, right. Four, four. You know what? I'm just Black. like, I can tell I've only had a little caffeine. 44076. Clubtail. Because dinosaurs. Because why not, right? Now, 4-4 four, four is uh, Bones Black, correct? I think. Now you're asking me questions I have no idea on. Uh, thank you for the raid, Dragon. Oh, yes. yeah. Dra great, Dragon. <laughs> we get raided right when you know I, we're testing out a new system, which is why stream testing is on the screen, everybody. Thank you. And, and uh, thank you for helping us test <laughs> unexpectedly. <laughs> So the reason this is a test is that, you know, I'm piping in from home. So we're going to see how this all works. Let's see here. So actually, I'm using some Pathfinder colors today. I wanted to talk to you about that because I haven't really used Pathfinder colors before in the stream. Um, I'm going to put them up on the the thing. I actually really like this boggard green. That's my base for Mr. Uh, Mr. Dinosaur here. It's this, this pale yellowy green. Uh, it's really muted. And then we're going to be doing some... Uh, Washes. Also, John did confirm that it is Bones Black. Oh, okay, good. Thanks, John. 
So we're going to be using a couple of Pathfinder colors for our main colors. I also have a blue here that I'm playing with um, that is uh, kind of a mixture of regular line and uh, Pathfinder, but I'm not sure it's going to be dark enough, so we'll see. Um, so we're going to start with the greens, and then I'm probably going to introduce some additional shadows, probably with, with Styx Purple, because I actually really like how uh, purple shade greens. So... And the key with washes, and this is the thing, with dinosaurs, the fast, fast way to paint these huge dinosaurs is to probably to airbrush or to use a giant brush and brush paint your base coat on all over, and then to build up washes to bring out all the texture of the skin. And if you want to use additional, um, Justin is louder than Anne. Yeah, definitely, we were fine tuning the, uh, the sound setup last night. And unfortunately, that's the only way we can we can really get it to work right now. I'm getting some additional equipment, but uh, it, we, we were trying not to get feedback with Justin because uh, he's being piped through my computer so I can hear him and also through the internal system. So essentially, once I get an earbud, hopefully we can normalize our sound settings. But for now, Justin will be louder than Ian. How about now, guys? Is it a little bit better? Yes, that's good. We don't want an echo. That was our big problem last night when we were originally testing this. I'm going to throw some more. It's kind of dry in here today, so I'm going to throw some more water into my mix here. Yeah, I decided to uh, to do some adjustments on my end, so it might be a little bit quieter for you guys. Yeah, just a little. He's minimizing himself. What do you all think? Good? Don't hear an echo. Can you hear Justin, though? Oh, good, Kernico. Well, I'm glad. I'm, this is a very timely dinosaur, then. Hey there, Chinner. Good to see you. Surrender dog. Good to see you. Yeah, painting dog. Actually, um, Swamp would have been my choice, but I'm reorganizing my entire paint collection, and I thought, why not use Pathfinder Greens? So yeah, Swamp would be even more drama, essentially. Um, volume sounds good for Justin. How is it that Anne doesn't have, have which? Reaper is my addiction, Anne doesn't have what? I think they're talking about earbuds. Oh you yeah. Know, you know how Reaper um, has earbuds? My only earbuds, uh, Reaper is my addiction, is uh, our Bluetooth ones. For when I walk, so I don't really, ha I don't have an analog plug to plug into my keyboard, and this uh, my gaming laptop, which is what I'm using, uh, does not have Bluetooth. So I just ordered uh, a night, you know, a cheap set of analog um, earplugs, earbuds. We also didn't want to take any of the Reaper earbuds because we didn't want to. Um, well, I mean, they're giveaways and stuff for people. Hey there, so Corsair. Yes, that's true. Reaper has giveaways, but you know. <laughs> I did not actually know that we had Reaper earbuds, or I would have like totally yoinked a pair pair because I'm pretty sure that you know Ed would totally do that for me. But but as is, I ordered that. snazzy purple ones, and we all know how I feel about purple. So enough said, really. So yeah, so key for washes to get slightly back on track. And for those of us, those of you who have just joined us, um, we are doing a test stream today with me at home to uh, test our new system for piping in painting talent so that, you know, they don't have to fly to Texas and we can have a variety of guests for you guys. Uh, so yeah, hello all. Hello, Coffee Nerdery Beer. And it's all about purple. Yes, I am. Although, weirdly, Coove's yellow is my favorite color, but I seldom, I didn't want to paint a yellow dinosaur for you today. Yeah, Jedi Jared knows. He's like, yellow. But you know what, Jedi Jared? Yellow is not a popular color with the mainstream culture, and so it's really hard to find things in yellow, whereas purple is very popular, so it's easy to find things in my secondary favorite color. Yeah. It... Do, 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 do. Um, Something, yeah, actually, if I, because it's often on the mold, uh, you know, you when you prime, you see mold lines, and then you're like, ugh, mold lines, and then you go and remove them. I will either touch up with brush on primer, or if I have done a sizable, um, you know, scrape off, or if it's on, or if it's on a surface that I think I'm going to handle a lot. Like, um, there's, there's a model that I'm doing for my paint along on my Patreon that, that I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to handle that space a lot. I probably should actually do a respray prime. 
And as long as you're light with your spray priming coatings, you can absolutely do a second prime. It depends a lot on the primer you're using. So if you're using an automotive primer um, or, or a cheap Walmart primer, you can get into trouble with the thickness on those. But if you're using most hobby primers and you're using them real lightweight and you're not over spraying, you should be able to do two coats of spray if you want. And spray does adhere a little better than brush on. Um, but in general, if it's not a, 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 an area that I'm going to handle a lot, uh, brush on is just fine for touch-ups. Um, and it doesn't take much. I mean, it doesn't take much time to do any of those. So it's not like you're losing more than a minute in there. Do, 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 do. Just check in the chat. I need to find a way to mount my, uh, my... I can see now, Justin, why you say people mount an entire second monitor on their desk to uh, easily watch chat. Um, under yellow, Corsair, you got to use white. You got to, um, and then it wore a very light gray, uh, for priming under yellow, because otherwise, if you try to use black, it's going to go green in the shadows when you put the yellow over it and you need to build up so many coats. You will just want to like, just end it all. Um, so essentially you, you really need to start light and I usually will use like, um, Palomino gold or mustard yellow, although that doesn't exist anymore, or a mixture of Palomino gold and lantern yellow for my base, uh, color on yellow. Those all, uh, are pretty bright still over white and they cover really well. Do, 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 do. What uh, no I Matt. Hey, George Hintz. Um, starting pink for painting yellow? I have never heard that. Interesting. I would think you'd just start with a lighter yellow. Um, <laughs> George Hintz, this is the club tail. He just came out. He's one of those great dinosaurs sculpted by Jason Weeby. Um, and uh, his number is 44076, so bones black. Uh, he's really nice texture, so I thought we'd do some wash painting today to show you guys how fast you can really, you know, cover ground on this guy to make him look good. Um, my advice would be to base coat him uh, with airbrush, although you could also use just a big brush uh, and just go with that, depending on how much time you want to spend on your base coat. Yeah, mixing yellow and white primer together for a base coat. Actually, mixing any color and our brush on primer together for a base coat works. Just make sure the paint color that you use is, is minimized, like use mostly primer. Because uh, the primer has chemicals in it that are going to micro etch the surface and, and cause it to cling better to the model. And if you add paint to that, you're diluting those chemicals. So you're not going to get as much of a cling with your primer. So make sure that if you do mix primer and other colors, which is absolutely cool, um, try to use less paint, more primer. All right, so we've got some Hodag green, which is actually the most popular Pathfinder color, uh, weirdly. Um, we were looking at sales the other day and I did an inventory and Hodag is like outselling all other Pathfinder colors, this nice dark green here. Um, and I guess, I guess it's a great military green. So if you're painting, you know, Russian tanks or whatever, it's probably great for that or, um, you know, camouflage and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, and then this pale color here is Boggard Green from Pathfinder, which I really love. There's really no color like this in the MSP line. Um, and that's what I really like for Pathfinder is that we, they definitely have some unique colors. I would also recommend Asmodeus Red, which is a beautiful warm red brick, dark red brick color. Um, I may end up using that for some demons coming up. Uh, yeah, hey, no problem. I am here for the knowledge. Thank you for, for bi bias or for base. Whatever your name is, thank you for the sub. Yay. So Justin, as the weather gets warmer, I think we should actually start some small giveaways for this stream, like maybe paint. Um, that so, works for me. Yeah, just like a couple of, you know, like like for this stream, I would normally have said, you know, these two colors, but it's still too cold to uh, ship it really safely. So uh, so we're going to hold off still a little bit, guys. But I, uh, I could certainly start formulating ideas on that. So all right, so let's talk about... Uh, do, 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 do. Just checking. Hi, Twisted Oma. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah, this is a good model for a monkey base. Okay, so when you're going to do painting with washes, you want to start with the lightest color you can. Um, and the reason for this is that every wash you add, every color you add, is going to take this color down. It's going to darken it, right? And when you're using, when you're dealing with a fine pebbled texture like this, it can sometimes be... Uh, a pain in the butt to try to dry brush over it and not get, you know, paint in the cracks. So often I will, uh, I will just try to try to start really light and then paint very carefully with washes and leave a lot of my upper surfaces, maybe with only one wash of color and then build up more color in like under the wrinkles and in the shadows. So that's what we're going to try today. 
So our first coat is going to be this Hodeg Green, and my wash ratio is two drops of this, four drops of sealer, and I think at this point it's about three drops of water. I've been getting a little evaporation, but I've also added more in. Um, you want to use a big brush that's filled with your paint when you do washes because you want to cover the area quickly. Uh, you are looking for a thicker, a slightly thicker paint because you do want it to pool. You don't want it to be too thin, otherwise you'd be gla glazing. And I'm just going to pretty much start, I start at the top of an area and work down or start on one side and work across. And here it makes sense to start at the top of the leg and work down. And right away when I start putting it down, I'm going to see how much I'm coloring the underlying area. And you really just want to dab it on and leave it to goop. You don't want to brush it on thin. Like a lot of people I see the mistake they make is just trying to gently brush on the wash and it's like, no, 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 just glue it on, glue, 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 and let it pool. You don't want to make a nice even coat. You want it to be pooling in the shadows. Um, and also keep in mind that with all washes that you build from paints, they will look darker wet than they will when dry. So although this looks fairly dark right now, it will dry slightly lighter. So I'm keeping that in mind. The lighter color you start with on a wash, the more drama you're going to get, the more detail you're going to pick up when you add a darker wash to it. And the more difference between your light and your dark, the more detail is going to show. You can go too far though with this because you uh, essentially can choose too dark of a color and then it's not gonna look like you're getting blending. So if I'd gone with something with a lot of black in it that was really, really dark, it would just look odd. It would essentially, all these light pebbles would show up, but they wouldn't look like they were blending into the shadows very well. So it works to pick two colors that, that work together. But if you did this, like say with the Reaper uh, triads, for example, some of the early triads that have a lot of space between them, um, you might want to go like highlight to shadow. Um, it, but some of them you might want to go highlight to midtone. Like um, for the purples triad with amethyst purple, 9024 and 9023 imperial, I would definitely do amethyst to imperial first and then add shadows and nightshade because nightshade is so close to black. So kind of make your judgment call based on how close to black your shadow is. Um, but now you can see I've gotten a nice uh, subtle color. It's drying now. Let me see. I'm going to catch up on chat for a second. We did give away brushes um, not too many weeks ago. But again, this show, we aren't, we aren't trying to focus so much on the giveaways because we're trying to uh, keep things a little lighter for Justin until he has an assistant to help with that stuff. Um, yeah, there is definitely you need to putty tail and neck on this model. I actually didn't do it. If you guys want me to show that, I certainly could. I could actually show working with green stuff on a future video if you wanted. I'm doing a lot um, of that on the Patreon right now. Although right. conversely, Anne, yeah. which you could do. Is, uh, I know you because you talked about wanting to do this. If you want to do giveaways or when we're comfortable with it, I can show you how to put the orders in ah. um, and kind of how to verify people. And then we can kind of direct those giveaways to you, at least for this stream, if you want to. Yeah. Maybe in your yeah. Wednesday stream. It's up to you. Um, and you can I can show you how to process the orders. Um, yeah, we could. Let's have that discussion um, at some point and see because uh, I could see a hiccup in that coming up. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, but anyway, um, I've got a magnetic gummy question. Hey, Anne, do you normally prime your knees in black or white? And if so, airbrush, spray can, or paint it? Um, I normally use a light gray or a white. I actually like light gray the best uh, magnetic gumby. I use the Tamiya or Tamiya um, light gray primer, fine surface primer, uh, a lot. Um, and uh, apparently there's a color that GW has called gray sear that's very close. Um, but uh, I like gray and I like spray. Uh, I don't actually, up until recently, I haven't, I've really kind of had a phobia about the airbrush. I just haven't seen the point because I always look at my cleanup time with it and ask myself if it's really worth it because I don't use it very much. Um, but I swore after Aaron Lovejoy's awesome video a couple weeks back that I would give it another chance. So maybe you'll see that change for me in the future. Um, so yeah, if, if I can't get a gray primer, then I, I go white because, uh, I just don't like having to fight to build my highlights up over black. I do Zenith Prime every once in a while, depending on the model. Um, if I really want to get a, a sense of like um, shadows, highlights, and volumes, um, I, I sometimes will Zenith Prime. Um, or if I'm experimenting, because lately I've been experimenting with Zenith a lot to see uh, how much of a pain in the butt it is um, to kind of cover over like the speckle effect that you get. And I know with an airbrush, you get a lot less of that. Um, and to see if it's really worth it, essentially, uh, 
to do the Zenith Prime, which is a black primer, and then you overspray white from the top of the model uh, to get the idea of shadows and highlights. So let's see, I'm just gonna brush over these guys. So we've got some nice skin. He's really coming along. Excellent. Even one uh, one wash is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Jenna Jared, we're trying to trying to correct it. Um WCC War. So I wash my bones um, in like hot soapy water and then I let them dry overnight. I have found because of that, that I can get away with using a thinner base coat. As you guys can see, my, my base coat is actually pretty thin, um, which I love. I like thin base coats. It gives me a chance to build stuff up a little bit better without worrying about detail. Um, and then putting a wash uh, in a controlled manner like I just did, usually no problem. Um, I have in the past had a problem with washes over bones, but I had come to realize that that's often when I haven't let the base coat fully dry that I may have that issue. Um, as you can see, this guy's working pretty well. I think also you want to wait and you want to make sure you're not like throwing a ton of water at the surface because then you can loosen up the underlying paint layer. Um, but uh, also I'm going to like wait for some of this to dry before I throw on more fluid because because yeah, the plastic doesn't necessarily bond with the paint quite as well because obviously I didn't put down a primer coat on this model at all. Um, so you can sometimes have that problem because the paint just clings a little more loosely. But if I go like, like this, like I have, um, then, then yeah, I, I haven't had a problem with, uh, washes coming up for a long time on bones. Uh, do, 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 do. Steinle Res, yeah, HM Road Dog. Steinle Res is, uh, the best airbrush primer from, uh, pretty much everybody I've talked to says so. So hey. I'm going to actually mix up a little bit more of this. Jedi Jared is uh, threatening to refer to us as professionals, Anne. I need you to fix that. Not professionals becoming Jedi Jared. No way. Totally not professional. I will say as a teaser, the next person you guys see do this sort of uh, remote streaming will likely be Proctor. And it should be right around the corner. Yeah, that's why we're kind of doing this. Because uh, we want a firm test of the uh, equipment. So there's my two drops of... Uh, Hodag, by the way, which is 89520. Then I'm going to put four drops of brush on sealer. And if you want to make sure your wash sticks together a little better, if you plan to maybe add a bit more water, then I would put an extra drop of sealer in. Sealer is what keeps your wash from breaking up on the model. And two drops of water. Do, 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 do. And we got a mix. There we go. Oh, uh, let's see here. The Medzik. I don't know if I want to see what that idea is. <laughs> Hodag. Um, Hodag is Pathfinder, so that's why it has a different SKU, uh, Trashorama. I mean, Pathfinder is all starting with 895. So, and that was just us trying to... Uh, Try, essentially, there was a we threw we threw a uh, prototype uh, SKU number at the Pathfinder line, and a lot of stuff got labeled with the prototypes. And we realized we had already signed the prototypes to something else, so we just threw an eight on the front of it. But also, we it's a contract line, right? We're we're contracting this paint, so technically, if if Paizo doesn't like it or if it doesn't sell, the contract could go away. So this is like just such an out there SKU that it isn't going to cause a big hole in the middle of everything if we have to cancel it. I hope we never have to cancel it because there's some very unique colors on here. Do, 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 do. I'm just looking at why sealer and not just medium. Iliad, honestly, our brush on sealer is just like matte medium, but I trust it more because I formulated it and I use it all the time in this uh, in this thing. The other thing uh, is I like the finish on our brush on sealer, and a lot of medium is more of a satin, not a matte, because matte in... Uh, canvas painter uh, land often isn't quite as matte as we like it. Um, so I know that if I add water to my brush on sealer, it's going to go to near matte. It's going to be a good finish. And so that's why I'm using this instead of matte medium. Honestly, with brush on sealer being a great stand-in for matte medium, I have no reason to go out and buy a different product. I'm just going to plop on some more 
wash here. I'm just going to go over everything. As you can see, I mean, I, I pretty much base coated everything in this light green. When you're dealing with a big model like this, where you know the bulk of the model is going to be one color, it makes sense to base coat in that one color and then just, you know, over base coat in other colors. Hello, Planar Crossroads. Yeah, I hate winter two coups. Hey, Planar, how you doing? Let's also, see. in order to uh, adjust my volume, I'm, I'm further away from the mic just to kind of make it easy. So I'm used to talking in the mic. Every now and then I'll get louder because I lean into it. Yes, as he leans in. Uh, follow up. Advice for spray priming in the cold north during the winter if doing it inside isn't possible. What well, we used to do back in Wisconsin when it was, you know, negative 40 <laughs> at the game store uh, is we used to actually open the door and uh, stand at the threshold and spray out. Um and so usually you've got this big rush of warm air behind you that's coming out through the door into the weather. Uh, and you have to be quick, obviously, because you don't want to let all your heat out or your parents will yell at you or the store will yell at you or something. But um, what this does is create a buffer where the cold air, as long as it's not into your face, um, somewhat buffers uh, the spray primer and you don't get uh, that horrible frosting effect that you can get with cold otherwise. So yeah, if I had to do it now, uh, actually I have done this at my house here. I have actually done that trick of standing in the doorway and spraying out into the weather um, to uh, to spray prime. If I, you know, I don't have anywhere here at my house that I can really safely spray inside. At Reaper, we have, we have the shipping dock, which is kind of halfway between outside temperature and inside temperature. Um, but you know, most of us don't have that. You can also try the garage. If your garage is attached to your house, it may be slightly warmer. Uh, if you have a house, um, the garage is a, okay. Like if, if outside is 20 degrees, but your garage is more like 40, you may be able to get away with it. Um, the key is to have your primer and the model at the same temperature. Otherwise you can get effects, bad effects. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I know. I was there magnetic on me. I was hobbying in Madison, Wisconsin and you know, the negative 40 degrees. It's ridiculous. I mean, brush on primer otherwise, or airbrush, prim airbrush your primer inside with a ventilation hood. But if you do not have those, then yeah. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Oh, yeah, exactly. You want to have your, uh, your spray and your uh, model at the same temperature. Yeah, Justin's voice is going to sound so different, Wolvie, because he's also, uh, he's using some different equipment also to test it again for our, uh, remote streaming. So this is very much a test stream. I think a, a large part of it, too, comes from me coming through Discord, and Discord can absolutely kind of change people's voices a bit. Yeah, basement works, too, Penny Dog. That's, that's a great thing. Um, Corsair, I'm, I was raised a Packers fan, but I'm not a big football person. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's up in the air, um, who I root for, if anybody, uh, these days. But yes, I, I was raised in a family of rabid Packers fans and, uh, during when the last opportunity came up, actually my Christmas present to my parents was Packers stock as, as a share of the uh, Green Bay Packers. Because they do that, they open it every once in a while. Exactly, Iliad. It's it's compression that comes from Discord. But luckily, uh, I'm, just, I'm not the star, so you don't I'm, really need uh, to hear me. Going back in now with my green wash and making it a bit heavier in some places that are shadowed, guys. And I'm still using the wash to do this, so it'll st it should layer up pretty well. Wash consistency is really close to a good layering consistency. So if you build, if you learn to build a wash this way, although I usually don't use the the sealer if I'm doing a layering, just because I don't like the plasticness of it. But here, I still want it to kind of fall into the cracks, right, and blend in. So that's why I'm uh, I'm doing it this way. And I'm still leaving some spots that'll catch the light, like the top of the shoulder, this bulge right here, this bulge right here, the wrinkles. I'm still leaving them the base uh, color so that we can start. You can see now here's your difference, right? There's your first layer. Here's another layer of wash. See how that's like building up very nicely. I decided to go a little heavier here because I wanted these big studs on his shoulder to stand out a little bit better. And I can do that with other colors too. I'm annoyed at this. I don't think this blue is going to work though. It went a little light. I was I was using Ezrin blue, but then that was too dark. That's a another uh, Pathfinder color, which is really vibrant blue, and I thought it might be too dark and too bright. So maybe I need to just put another drop in there and try it. Because I usually like 
I like to use blues and purples to shade uh, greens. Um, I think there it makes it a little bit more fun than just using. You can also use if you want a very naturalistic look, use dark browns, um, and that'll be a lot more natural for you. But I like colorful, especially because now you know we're starting to think that dinosaurs may have been a lot more colorful than we thought. Let's see how that is. Well, that's about the same. Unfortunately, it's still a little lighter than my previous wash, which is not ideal. I was using a mixture of creamy ivory and the blue to try to mute out the blue a little bit. I'll do one more drop of blue. Uh, Kuvs, she's using the, uh, the what is it, the Ipivo VX? Uh, VXZ R or something. Or, uh, yeah, I'd have to look down at my box. Let me see. VZX. VZ-X. And this is my document cam. Uh, it's this little teal guy here. He's very cute. I really like this camera, actually. Um, I ordered it after Reaper was using a document cam because I was like, oh, I really like this, but Reaper's is old and I can't find it. So let's see what the newest thing is. And I was impressed by this model because a lot of teachers use it for classrooms and they were able to use it pretty much for all day, which a lot of document cams in the old days weren't made for long periods, right? Um, because obviously they expect you to just scan your document and be done. Um, right. so yeah, now that, uh, I'm going to mix up some six purple too. Um, but now that, uh, more and more teachers are using these just as, cause you can plug it into an overhead projector and it's great. You can just put whatever you want under it. Um, and you can re-angle the camera if you need to also. So it's just really good. It's got a really nice, uh, high megapixel count on the camera as well. So I can stream it, you know, a decent resolution and. Uh, it's got like a, a good fixed focus button that's really handy, and yeah, I like it. Mixing up a big batch the, of purple. The biggest thing I've noticed, honestly, though, I am between this and the uh, the the one we use at the studio yeah. is the color science. Color science on this one seems to be a lot better. Yeah. So like uh, sensors, as I'm sure you know, based on megapixels, based on you know the color science they use, the compression. This one just seems to have a really nice balanced but kind of flat image. Yes. Just out of the box. Yeah, I really like that. I was that's part of why I really liked it from the time I I started using it is that this color that you're seeing is pretty much perfectly representational of how it looks in person. Whereas um, I often get a shift that's too dark or a shift that's too light or something like that because you know the camera just isn't cameras just aren't as good as our eyes um, and that's just a fact of nature at this point until like our camera science goes through the roof. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, no giveaways in the stream yet. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see. Sorry, catching up on chat. Do, 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 do. Bedtime stories with Justin. No, let's not have bedtime stories with Justin. This sounds like a terrible stream. All right. Well, I see how it is, Anne. I see, I see how it is. <laughs> you, you don't want me to read you a bedtime story? Do, we, do you guys want Justin to read Goodnight Moon to you? Or something else? Justin's sultry tones. Justin reads bedtime stories to the Reaper fans. Is that a great late night feature that we could introduce? I'm going to try. I don't, I'm just not convinced about this blue, though. I think the purple is really going to be the one we go with. The blue is still reading too light to me, so I'm going to remove Mr. Blue. That sticks purple. These look like they might go a little bit better. Uh, maybe I should mix up a brown, too. Let me see. What do I got? Rings, I'll give you the link to the camera here in just a second. I'll oh, yeah. Up. Go look it up. It's not a cheap camera. I had to use, uh, use the Patreon money to afford it. Um, but it's a good investment on my end, for sure. Because I, want I wanted something that I could be very confident about. Let's see here. There. We're going to go uh, to black and brown, 9137. For our brown shadow, I'm just going to drop some stuff in it. There you go, rings. That is the exact camera she is using. Yes, indeedy. And uh, they've got their own software. Of course they do, because that's what people use to try to get you know brand loyalty these days and sometimes money. Uh, the software was free download, so. But it's not bad. Um, you know, you I would there, listen to I would listen to Collins read "Good Night Moon" in his southern drawl. <laughs> Yeah, Collins could have a very soothing uh, bedtime story voice, couldn't he? Except I imagine, like, Collins wanting to read the bedtime stories like the old fairy tales, the ones that didn't have happy endings. <laughs> yeah, the price isn't too bad for as far as document cameras go. Now, 
the jury is still out because we haven't put it through enough testing on how long the sensor will hold up to frequent use. Right. So that's, that's the one thing that burns up DSLRs when people try to use them for streams and stuff. Is they work, but there's only a certain amount of, you know, there's only so much heat they can take before they start to uh, mess up colors, before they start to, like, uh, have bleed, essentially. Um, dead pixels. I mean, it's, you know, sensors. Oh, no. Sensors pixels. are the, yeah, sensors are the weird part. Um, we don't know how long it's going to last. We will find out, though. Yeah, this is the grand experiment, right? So I did a lot of reading of reviews, and I liked the fact that a lot of teachers have been using it for classroom use for months with uh, no issues. So, Also, thank you, Trexmar, earlier for the uh, feedback on the Warlord stream. I appreciate that. That was The Warlord stream was about, in my opinion, 20% done. It needs a whole lot more work to be where I'd like it to be. Um, but if you guys actually like watching it, then that's something we can pursue. So I'm introducing some purple here, and I'm brushing it on a lot lighter, and I'm not letting it pool as much. Um, I just want, at this point, I'm almost glazing with it. I want a suggestion of shadow color, but I don't want the purple to take over the green. Um, but you see now how much more finished we're looking. Like, this is actually looking, this is very where we started. And then we went to this. So now I'm gonna add, because that purple is pretty strong. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hey there, real brush guy. Sorry, catching up on chat. Catching up on chat. You like the picture on this, this stream, Lurka Spleen? Good, I'm glad you like this picture. That, that means my home setup is not a total failure. <laughs> So let's see, let's do some brown. This is 9137 uh, black and brown, which I use a lot. This is very, oh, this is very, very dark. I'm gonna have to thin this one more. So when I put it down, if I can see a strong line, I don't want that. I just wanna introduce this brown to give it a more natural shadow. I'm gonna keep some of the purple, but I want it to be a little more understated so the purple isn't obvious, um, or as obvious anyway. So I'm adding a whole new brush full of water. Uh, so, I was, George Hintz, I was using a Logitech 920C. Um, my biggest problem with it is that I could not get good, consistent resolution, clear picture on it. Uh, my earlier videos on my Patreon were shot with that Logitech, and uh, I took one look at this document camera, and I was like, whoa, it is so much more crisp. Like, I cannot even tell you. Like, factor, like, double crisp. The other one, the, the Logitechs just do not get you in close where you can see really sharp tight details and if i'm going to do really high-end video like like extensive freehand or anything that you need to see the brush strokes on like where you really want to see how the paint is acting so even that is still too strong see that guys way too much um i think that for uh, for the work that miniature painters do i think that uh, a webcam is a mistake just based on my experience with this uh with this um document camera I mean, all of the high-end streamers or high-end um, miniatures video people like Aaron Lovejoy, um, if, you, if you're not then comments and you don't have a very high-end real video camera, um, but we're all using, we're switching to document cams. The more uh, publicity they get, the more the community is embracing them because we all want to show you every brush stroke, right? And we don't want to show you every brush stroke in general. We want to show you, like, we want you to see what the paint is doing. Because it's good. the more information you have, the more you're going to be able to use it when you do these techniques and go, oh, yeah, this looks like when Anne did it. That's how the paint looked. Whereas if we don't get sharp enough, then the educational value of our streams really suffers. Um, and especially, I want to say, especially when doing small models. Uh, when I was trying to do 28 millimeter with the, with the uh, Logitech uh, 920C, uh, good luck. I just could not get very crisp on a very small model up near the camera. Now, I will say that uh, when when we actually shift studios, because we're not going to do it in the current studio, I am going to have a, a professional uh, swing arm mounted so that I can uh, mount basically our, our FS5, which uh -huh. is a, a very, 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 very nice um, semi... Actually, it is a professional video camera yeah. to, to basically give us some with some nice glass too on it to give us probably the best picture you'll ever get looking at a mini. Yeah. It'll, yeah. It'll I mean, nothing really... out, you know, nothing outweighs a, a real camera. Right. And Justin has the, has the elite skills to know how to work with those suckers. Um, 
But uh, for those of us who are kind of uh, noob, camera noobs and we're just trying to get a good video out to you guys for, on really small models, um, I think the document cam is a good, a good thing. But yes, uh, for budget, for budget, the C920 or 922 uh, uh, Logitech is not a bad bet. Just keep in mind it has definite limits. And I highly recommend downloading the Logitech gaming software suite if you have not, if you are trying to shoot video with a Logitech um, webcam because that lets you dial in your white balance and everything a lot better. Uh, and it just, it's instrumental, I think, uh, to getting a good uh, representational picture with a Logitech webcam. I could not something. agree more, actually. I think that the, between document cameras and the, the C922, the, uh, the, the Logitech one you're talking about, Too I much. think that they're fantastic entry-level cameras. Um, yeah. Actually, mid-range cameras. Too. Like, they're, they'll, they'll last you a very long time. Yeah, I would say yeah, I would but, say mid and and yes, they're gonna last, right? They're made to stand up to repeated use for very long periods of time, which we don't know about these document cameras yet. So we're gonna see. But if this guy, if even if like if this camera takes a year and then kind of burns out, I'm gonna count that still as three hundred dollars well spent, considering the quality of the picture I'm getting. Um, now I w I will say kind of on that same topic because I saw that Bug Lips was talking about an IP though four uh, K. Technically speaking, if you take a four K camera and you down res it uh, and compress it essentially for your stream, it will look better than native 1080. Same thing goes for video editing. So you, you're never going to, not anytime soon are you going to be able to stream in 4K because people don't have the pipelines for it, nor the service for it. They're not, it's not supported. So 4K is not realistic at this day and age, but down resing your 4K to get a crisper image and higher HDR, stuff like that, 100% possible. That is a direction that you can take. Let's see. Let's put some horns on him. Chunks. I want creamy. I want stained ivory. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to make these little uh, spikes here actually stand out a bit more. Use a different color. I'll probably use the same color for his little nails. And I'll probably use black and brown for that. So. I can't speak to the quality of the IPVO 4K coups because I've never used it. I assume if it's color science is the same as their other models, like uh, their codecs are the same, then I would stand to reason that it would be completely fine. Um, but I've never used one, so I can't really put my, my right, stamp. Right, yeah. Neither of us have. That's why I kind of decided to just go with this model. This this model was the one that had the best reviews that I found. Um and as Justin says, I didn't see the point in like starting with a very high res camera. I was just trying to get a slightly better picture and I wanted to see if this could do it for me. Um, and the answer is yes. So if at some point I did decide that like if, if at some point 4K streaming was actually supported by the technology, then I I would might consider upsizing up uh, upping on this camera. But but so far, I'm so happy with how this camera performs. Now, if one of you guys wants to try the IPvo 4K and try the down resing, the compression I'm talking about, and tell me what you think, then I would absolutely welcome that. Tell me what your your tests are. Yeah, I mean, we we would love to hear uh, about it if you do decide to blow the budget and uh, and do it. Yeah, that's that's another thing too, Rax, is that. Uh, that even if you put out in 4K, not everyone's TV is at 4K. But the beauty of 4K is that you take the screen that it's giving you, and you take it does have more pixels per square inch, and that will essentially directly translate to more resolution, to essentially a, a crisper image, uh, more detail in every nook and cranny. Where you combine that with good HDR, and then even if you down res it, those pixels don't go away. So you're going to get an overall better image. There are plenty of people out there in the professional world that will shoot in 4K, and then because they want, they don't want to work with those big files, they'll down res them to 1080 and post, and then it causes a nice, crisp image. This is Justin, the pro. Listen, guys, he is wise. I'm going to switch to a smaller... Well, maybe I won't switch to a smaller brush. I'm using, um, by the way, my brush today is a DaVinci Maestro, but it's a different one. It's a Series 11, which means it's a fuller, thicker brush. Um... And uh, it's a size one. So you can see just the difference between, actually, I'll show you guys a comparison. Different uh, lines, in, even in the same brand, but the different shape of different brushes will also be different sizes. These are both DaVinci ones. One of them is the Series 11, and one of them is the Series 10. You can see down here on the little barrel. 
Uh, they're both Kalinske Sables. So that is a huge size difference. And this is the full-bodied round, and this is the regular round. So do keep in mind that when you're dealing with different uh, series, like uh, the Rosemary 22 and 33, which a lot of people use, same thing, has a bit of a size differential um, from what I have seen. Uh, but yeah, this happens a lot. Because the, the brush, depending on the usage, it's all about the usage. Because the brush manufacturer is like, well, what is this supposed to be used for? And what size is useful? They assume that anybody using this, like the Series 11, is a full belly round. Anybody using a full belly round, they're assuming, needs to carry a lot of paint. Whereas anybody using a Series 10 is going for detail. So that's why they altered uh, the size of the brush along with the shape. Um, Sipstorm? I think that if there's enough people who email Adrian about maybe teaching a class about something like that, I, I would consider it based on time limitations. Dr. Bob is right. A um, couple of things, yes. But Dr. Bob is correct that I'm not entirely sure I'll have time. I might teach a class or two. If that's something, if we had a bunch of people who wanted that information, we would, we would probably try to work it out because, you know, yeah. it's, it's, we, we're not stingy with information at all. We're not, yeah, we're not. We're not like that. Um, but also the real brush guy is hundred percent accurate too, that the optics on, on a digital camera is better than that comes down to the color science and the codex that different companies use that comes down to the 12 bit versus 10 bit, um, et cetera, when it comes to color. So George hints, um, the software that I mentioned is the Logitech gaming software. If you Google it, you will find it. Don't be off put by the name. Um, it, it honestly is fine for streaming or video as well. Um, it just gives you a suite of tools that you can utilize to actually like make your, it'll, it'll have a setting. If you go to the advanced menu, it has settings for brightness and white balance and all that stuff. And it also allows you to turn off your autofocus. So important uh, when you are streaming painting, um, which is, it is the most annoying thing when the camera wants to refocus. This document cam has a nice quick sh shortcut on that actually on the body of it. It has a little button that I can press to focus, but I can also hold down that button and it will lock focus. So it will essentially not autofocus from that point on. That's what I'm using today. But I very much, very much like it. John is also correct that there will be lots of streamers there to answer questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, my, so my angle that I take is a hundred percent the technical side of stuff. And I'm not saying other people don't know that, um, not at all. Cause it's not, you know, it's not exclusive information. I just, I have a lot of experience with it. So with that being said, that's, you know, it, if it, if you have a real technical question, I'm a hundred percent someone who can help you. So. And yes, Coobs, that color. will, uh, that will absolutely achieve the com downscale compression I'm talking about. Correct. Let me mix this up. All right. Actually, I have a cool example for you guys of how um, our line varies from Vallejo uh, or other lines with a he heavy bodied base uh, vinyl. Um, so a while ago, like this morning when I was playing with colors, I actually had mixed up some uh, one of my favorite Vallejo colors is the SM Camo Black Brown, um, which is good, a good liner color. But uh, I mixed it up just like I was mixing up my other colors here in the same proportion. And I'm going to give you, uh, give you an idea because I, I, I remixed it right before the stream. Here's another color that I mixed right before the stream. This is Styx Purple. This is a Vallejo color. Look at the separation in the Vallejo color. These are mixed exactly the same with the exact same proportions of sealer and water and the separations. That's how you can tell a vinyl base from the Master Series base. A lot of companies use vinyl bases because the good thing about them is they're heavy coverage out of the bottle. So you get that you know very thick coat of color when you first lay them down. But when you want to thin them for applications like this, you absolutely have to keep remixing and mixing. Look at the change. That's the actual color of the paint. And that settled out you know after over not very long at all. Like if I leave it it'll settle out over a matter of minutes, which if you're trying to paint over the course of an hour is really, really annoying. Um, I used a lot of Vallejo when I started, and this is a quality that I didn't see, it's already lightning. Um, this is a quality I didn't like, and this is why we changed this in Master Series. And this is why Master Series may not cover as well as vinyl lines, but when you need it to perform in a layering or a washing or a glazing or any thinned application, Master Series is gonna stay in solution a lot better. So, had that, thought I would uh, give you a comparison. It's not often that I have another company's paint open on my palette um, or in my vicinity, but I did notice that just a minute ago and I was like, oh, hey, 
I can utilize this. Um, and it's not that either line is better than the other. It's that, you know, usage, right? It's, and the problem is, of course, when you're a new painter, you don't know the qualities of the various paint lines. You learn through, you know, listening to people, watching them use it, using it yourself, you know, and it also matters, you know, what's your painting style. Like uh, Marika, Marika does a lot, uh, Marika Reimer does, a, used to be a Reaper painter, um, very famous painter. And uh, she used to do a lot of wet blending and she preferred thicker bodied, more vinyl lines for her initial layers because she needed it to cover um, on her first go through. But then she'd switch to master series and she'd glaze with our colors and, and highlight with our colors um, to finish her work because she couldn't, uh, it's harder to make a vinyl base do those fine tricks. Um, so yeah, so it's, it, it isn't that, I'll never diss every paint line. I will say when there are things, I, qualities I do not like. Um, that to me irritate me. And I, when I was using a ton of Vallejo back before there was even Masteries, back before I worked with Reaper, um, that was the biggest thing that and the adhesion problems. The other problem with a uh, heavy bodied line is it doesn't stick as well to the model. So I'm putting over, uh, going over it again here with Hodag Green, just going over the purple and the brown to blend them in. You can kind of see how we're getting a nice definition now. The purple is probably the weirdest thing on here. And if I had just gone with greens and olives and browns, I'd be getting a much more natural effect on Mr. Dinosaur. Um, Planar Crossroads, I have not used them, but gosh, I cannot tell you the number of people we've had come into the Reaper game store that are very unhappy with them. And I'm not sure, I get the feeling that they're probably another heavy bodied vinyl, um, though I'm not sure about that, having not used them, but that is the standard these days. Companies, a lot of paint companies seem to think that all painters want is coverage. And I happen to disagree. I mean, they're right somewhat when you're just painting armies. Um, but even now, even now on that, I think they're going to miss out unless they switch up their tune because when you have to uh, make airbrush paint, you usually have to thin it and quite extensively. Uh, and then what happens when your paint starts separating out in the bowl of your airbrush, right? So I don't know, maybe that's not a problem. I haven't airbrushed enough to really be an expert on that one. But but for me, I think that, that this, uh, this tendency of paint companies to just go for coverage over any other quality is a mistake. And I think... It's why Master Series gets more people switching over to it here and there than I hear other. I, I very seldom hear from anybody, yeah, I tried Master Series, but then I switched over to X brand. I hear a lot more of, yeah, I, you know, and given this is, you know, I'm a Reaper person, so obviously I may be hearing biased info, but I hear a lot more people saying, yeah, I actually tried, I've worked with uh, Games Workshop for a long time, and then I tried Reaper and now I'm sold, you know, so. It's, I, I just, I feel like we need more than one function in the paint line community. Like, uh, not everybody should be going for coverage. So that's why Reaper is a little bit different. And it, it is a learning curve. Like, if you're, if you're used to a paint that just flat out covers in one coat, um, then yeah, you, you definitely, usually with Reaper, you do need to put on two coats, two thin coats is the best. Um, but, but yeah, so we will continue to be different. Um, I've tested a couple of other paint lines from other companies, and it, it does seem like everybody's going vinyl uh, or a blend. Like, uh, I like Scale 75, actually. Of all of the other paint lines, I think Scale 75 comes closest to Master Series um, in a lot of ways. And I think they're using kind of a blend of the vinyl-y, heavy body uh, resin, and it seems like they may have a, a, an acrylic blend with that. But... <laughs> I'm glad, Rings. I'm glad you like our paint. Yeah, it is very thick, Nonzero, and that's kind of what they're, they're wanting that coverage, right? Thoughts on synthetic sable versus real sable brushes. Um, Magnetic Gumby, I've tried the synthetic sables. They're getting better. They're really getting better. Like the master's touch line is, is pretty good, but they're still going to wear a lot faster than a natural hair. So um, now the cool thing about the synthetic sables is that they are uh, starting to actually manufacture each individual plastic hair at, with a taper on it, just like a natural hair would have. So it's acting a lot more like a real sable, um, which I think is very exciting, but they still are, they've still got to address the wear factor because a natural hair just is not going to bend at the tip like a synthetic will after prolonged use. It's just not the way that natural hair wears. And so 
I think that's a big, big challenge. It's going to be a big challenge for the synthetic brush companies, and maybe they need to look at coatings and things. I'm not sure. Um, something to to strengthen the hair, uh, the plastic hair, and make it more like a real hair. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Right now, I would say if you're starting out with layering and you don't have the money for a Kalinsky, um, yeah, pick up a Master's Touch, uh, one of their finer ones, uh, rounds. Um, but uh, but in the end. I think that if you if you when you have the cash, um, investing in like at least one detail Kalinsky sable brush, something with a nice fine tip, something as nice and narrow like this, is going to really hold you in good stead, in better stead than a synthetic. For now, we'll see. The, the game changes. They are really trying. The synthetic brush companies are really trying to nail it. Um, so we'll see. I'm kind of excited to see the tech. Let's see. Yeah, the sh actually non-zero. You're right. The Citadel shades are, are good. The, their washes and the contrast paint. They've got a. They're really uh, working with some different chemistry there. So, those are interesting and I think unique in the industry at this point. Do 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 do. Let's see here. Uh... Uh, Reaper paint says. Oh yeah, I've been a Reaper paint person since they came in jars, huh, George? Yeah, for sure. That was a while ago. That was when I first joined the company. Um, Dr. Bob, the Reaper branded Kalinsky brushes are a slightly lower price point than some of the other brushes on the market. So for that, if you're looking for an entry level Kalinsky, that's your chance to get one at you know only ten bucks as opposed to sixteen or eighteen, um, and that's good. Uh, and I do, I mean, I have, I have used on stream, the Reaper Out 5 used to be my workhorse brush when I was painting for Reaper. So it's all in the shape, right? The reason I love the Da Vinci Maestro is because I love the shape. Um, whereas the Reaper brushes, the Reaper Kalinskis are a little bit more of a standard shape. So they could be good if you're testing out, right? If you really want to buy a Kalinsky, but you're not up for paying 20 bucks for a brush or 15, then yes, look at our Kalinskis. Look at the Aught 5 and the Aught 10. Uh, specifically, those are the shapes and the sizes I think are the most useful, at least for me. Um, so I actually went over this, uh, how to choose a brush and, and talked about our brushes a bit in a previous stream. I don't remember which one it was. It was when we were giving away the brushes. That was last Wednesday, I think. Was it last Wednesday? No, no when we gave away the Kalinskis, yes. Yeah. Well, that's good, Karniko. I'm glad that the Master Touch brushes are wearing well, because with my experience, they weren't wearing quite as well. But I bought them a while ago, so it could be that they're upgrading their tech. I'm robotic. I had a robotic voice. That could Discord. have been... Yeah, that's... Well, it shouldn't be picking up your Discord sound, but... That's true. Sparrow it... Marie, uh, my DaVinci's... I usually order from dickblick.com. Uh, in the past, we had a vendor here at ReaperCon who brought them for me, and I was spoiled because then I got to go and just buy brushes from Tori. Uh, but he has, unfortunately, uh, moved on to a different uh, industry. So uh, now I have to order them from Dick Blick, which is actually just fine because Dick Blick has a great brush guarantee. If it arrives damaged, they'll replace it with no quibbles. Um just because they know, they know that it, that things happen in shipping, and that artists need. If, or if an artist is going to spend uh, fifteen brush, bucks on a brush, they want it to have a good tip, and not be mushed when it arrives. So, it's going well, Collins. Actually, it's going really well. Oh, is Collins checking the, in on us? Yeah, he is. Uh, the occasional modulation that happens through just different different internet bit rates. Planner, I totally get the uh, health issues eating your income that happened to me this year as well, or last year. Sorry, end of last year. And I've, and in previous years, so it does make it a little rough. Budgeting is a good thing, but yeah, uh, whatever you do. I mean, the Master Touch stuff works for you, then use it. I mean, it's all in in what you're accustomed to and and what you try and what works for you, right? So I'm never gonna like knock somebody for choosing to use the Master Touch stuff over Kalinsky's. Unless I notice that, you know, and I still won't knock you, I might suggest, uh, if I notice your brush work is a little bit rougher and I ask about it, then it could be your brush. Um, as far as when you come to layering or when you come to fine, fine details. But that doesn't really even come into play until you, um, oh, I shouldn't have thrown that that much, uh, until you 
are really working with super micro detail. I bet that most of the time, oh, and now I'm doing the wrong color. Ha ha. Anne's brain is failing. I need more caffeine. Also, if, if it, uh, if Anne's voice keeps going robotic, it's possible her CPU is pinned, which Anne, we may have to do some uh, tests for that. Oh, all right. Hmm. Yeah, my poor CPU. I can technically, I could upgrade even if it's, sucker. yeah, even if it's not pinned, it's possible that depending on how old it is, if it's had enough electricity through it, it may just have a failed moment. Ah, is it continuous or did it have a robotic moment and then it like went back to normal? I think it was just, uh, it was just uh, plainer. I think she heard it a couple of times, or maybe someone heard it. It wasn't um, constant. Okay, so I probably should go a little lighter. Well, we're almost to the end of the stream, because um, it is has been about an hour. But I'm I'm thinking this was a pretty successful test, Justin. I think so too. I think there hasn't been any issues. Uh, volume seems right. Yeah, that'll help once I get my earbuds, which I should get them either today, or late today, or tomorrow, and then we can uh, test that, make sure that that works. So I'm using Creamy Ivory, guys, to uh, just kind of pick out some some higher point scales. I probably want to pick out these guys. I probably want to pick out these wrinkles, make some, you know, simple highlights on some of the scales. If they're really high point areas, I, you could also dry brush, but you risk uh, impacting your wash and your, your washes and stuff. And maybe you impact them for the better. I don't know. It's up to you whether you want to do a, a light side brush or something over this whole area. But with little scales like this, they're very clear. Sometimes I like to just dot them real quick with the brush. It also helps you build up your brush control. Any fine, remember this, although fine work is hard, and although, especially when you're starting out, your brush uh, control is not the best. If you, if you never try this stuff, you will never get better at it because it's doing the fine detail and hitting the little dots that trains your hand to be good at this. So, if you always take quickie steps, if you always take the, I'm going to dry brush this because that's, you know, the only sane way to bring out all this detail and you never try to just highlight a few areas, just a little bit of extra, then you're, you know, it's going to be longer before you get the brush control that you really want. So, and, and building brush control with stuff like this also will build it for things like eyeballs and other fine details. So you always got to look at it like, you know, you may fail if you try it, but at least you tried it. And the more you try it, the better you get at it because it's just simple muscle memory. It's all brush control is. So there's our way, uh, leg. Dr. Bob, I'm taking that quote. Oh, what is it? You, you have to read it. I'm looking, looking, looking. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Except that I can't have coffee. The shakes are a warning. <laughs> Wait, can you not? Have, oh, that's right. You can't have coffee. Nope. I'm. I have to have tea. Coffee uh, wrecks my gut, and my gut is wrecked enough. Ouchie. So I'm. Uh, I'm no coffee. But that's all right. I. I love tea a lot. So I'm. I'm actually. I don't feel. I really don't miss it. Like there are sometimes if if you know if I'm at out for breakfast at a restaurant with friends or David or something that I'm like, oh, I, that coffee smells so good, but you know. Tea is good, too. I actually really like Earl Grey, so I usually just go for that. Most restaurants have it. All right. But, yeah, so kind of like that, everybody. I could probably highlight this area just a little bit. These little scales could get a little highlight. But any other questions? And, yes, this is like the high info stream. For those of you saying you, you love the info. Yes, Earl Grey tea. Yes, Earl Grey hot for sure. Yeah, I, I do some cold brewing as well, Rings, when I need it to be ready in the morning. I want to just like stuff it in for iced tea, especially. Oh, yeah. So, Bug Lips, this is uh, actually, and I have to thank one of my patrons for this. And this is where I should mention my Patreon, by the way. Um, Patreon is patreon.com slash painting big. Uh, we're so close to the $1,000 goal. I think I'm only 23 bucks away. It's killing me. <laughs> So, yay! Uh, if you want to become my patron, I would totally appreciate it because it's awesome and it really does help me out. Um, so, what we're using, this was given to me by my patrons. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. Do, do, do. So, these are little tech, like petri dish things cryotech, cryo mold, tissue tech, like that. Um, so, this were a present. Like, she brought some of these for me at ReaperCon 
And uh, I like them to use as little pallets on stream because they take up so little room and I can scooch a few of them out and leave a few of them in frame if I'm using them. And the other nice thing about these is the little tab that is there really for you to hold it is also a great uh, paint consistency judger. You can just smear your paint over it and see how transparent or how thick you are. Um, so it's really nice to show that. You know, this, this one you can see is really transparent and it's really easy to see just by smearing your brush over it. So yeah, I like these little things. Um, I use them particularly for videos. Like when I'm painting just for me in the evenings, I totally use my palette, which is up here um, out of frame. But sometimes on stream, I find that the, the white of the palette makes it hard to balance brightness because you have to, you almost sometimes have to make the miniature a little darker because you're trying not to blow out the white of the palette. So I, uh, I actually like using these guys because they're transparent. So they don't do that. I can I can play with them, especially if I'm only using a couple of colors. They're just really useful. So I don't know that I'd use them like for just painting at home, but if you stream or do video, I find they're really useful. Um, and then of course, you know, you can rinse them out if you want, or you can just re you know recycle them or whatever. But um, yeah, they're cute. I like them. I thought they'd be good to try out on this stream just because I I knew that I was going to have my camera fairly, fairly low and I didn't have as much uh, area to spread out stuff in as I do at the Reaper stream sometimes. Actually, Achilles, I'm looking for the uh, for the link now on what she showed, Sweet. so I can link them in case you guys. Yeah, I ordered them on them. Amazon, and I think they were super cheap. And you get a big box of them, so you get a lot. What's the um, what's the model on them again, or the the actual like skew that? It... Uh, four seven two eight tissue tech cryo mold four seven two eight standard. For, by Sakura. Sakura is the company. Or Sakura, as I should say in Japanese. And they do have a cherry blossom shape for their logo. Okay, let me just check chat one more time. Uh... Yeah, Planner, I'm sure there are a couple of different things that do this. I, these I can just order at the huge, by the huge box, you know, and they're pretty cheap. I guess like contact lens packages might work too. Um... Oh. English tea, yeah, thick enough for you to th for you to use as frosting. Is that it, Twisted Oma? Um, do do do. Yep, yep. Okay, I'm finding these is proving to be a little more. Really? Annoying. Let me see if I can get bring them up on Amazon and text you. Yeah, you have a history for them. They may. I don't want to say they removed them. Well, you never know. I mean, let's see here. Let's try. Let's see if I can find them. If I can't find them with these search terms, I'm gonna say, yes, they are specimen holders. Let's see here. Yeah, maybe they were, unless this is it. No, that's not it because that's way too expensive. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'll have, maybe we'll have to order them more on, uh... yeah, it looks like not on Amazon anymore. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, well, we'll have to look into it. Yeah, sorry, Achilles. Uh, we'll yeah, sorry about that. Do. I didn't mean to show you guys something that didn't exist. I thought it existed. <laughs> Achilles likes your shirt, though. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, since I left my uh, Reaper polos at, uh, at work, along with my Hellhound <laughs> uh, that I was going to paint, um, I uh, decided my ReaperCon t-shirts had to come into play. Doo -doo. 
Uh, direct message me that, uh, Scientologist or Scientologist, Sin, Sin. And I can, I can put it up. Yeah, as long as there's something similar, we're good. Yeah, Astley, it's not a big deal. I mean, I've got a fair amount of them, and, uh... And if not, I can always switch back to the palette. I mean, it's not like the palette is a deal breaker. It's just that these are, are handy for the stream, so I'm using them. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for helping us test. I think that maybe we could take the testing off the bottom for the next show. That'll, that'll doom us. <laughs> the minute we start to look professional, Justin, is when we're doomed. Yeah, we got to stop that. <laughs> Okay, All yeah, right. they, uh, I did find some stuff. So Scientologist sent us something here. Look. Something that's close. Yeah, they're a little bigger than those, but seems to be very small. I bet we could find something close, yeah. It's all good. All right. Yes, thanks for joining me at home, everybody. It's, uh, it's lousy outside, so I did not mind having to go out, not having to go outside in the morning. Hey, and Kiri slept through the whole thing. Great. And there's the link right there. I don't know why it didn't make it. Uh... Oh, now it's clickable. There we go. Yay! So yeah, disposable specimens for pregnancy tests. Well, you know, uh, painters will use anything. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, yeah, uh, those are deeper, but they it. they would work great actually for bigger batches of paint or for airbrushing. Those would work really well. And you could yeah. probably use... Um... Oh, uh, th this is just an Achilles plate. Collins is a uh, Col... There we go. Interesting. So let's... Uh, let's actually... Maybe I'll get some to test them. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get them in so we can. Uh... I mean, it's it's a limited usage, right? Because obviously, you, you really only need these if you're doing uh, streaming or uh, or videos. But uh, let me see here. Can I save it for later, please? Yeah, save for later. I'll deal with it later. All right. Good All right. Deal. Let me uh, let me see if I can get a raid. Oh yeah, you might want to do that. Let's see if I uh, let's go back to my starting soon or my face cam and see if. Uh, See if my intro plays again, which it shouldn't, because I hit the thing. But if you guys, this is, our, this is our next test here, is does the intro play again when moving back to my face cam? So here we go. We're going to try it. F4. Oh. Oh, wrong one. F2. Yep, it does. Oh, no. It's All right, fine. so I have to, uh, I will have to turn that off before I switch cams then. There we go. We, we had a blooper. Just one for you guys, right? <laughs> All right, and why am I I'm trying to see chat here? And it's uh, everything is annoying me. All right, guys. Well, then, uh, yeah, we're gonna say goodbye. Oh, yeah, yes, guys. Thank you for the uh, I thought that was kind of funny last week when we we managed to raid into Miniatures Den at the same time he raided us. So, we... <laughs> We just sent a bunch we of We crossed the streams. We crossed the streams. And did we, we get a Twinkie the size of New York? We did, actually. I think it's still <laughs> running around. So, all right. Well, then uh, I have a, a raid set up here for Jimmy. Super. Let's raid Jimmy. He's a nice guy. Let's hope like how this works. Oh, and it looks like it does. All right. Go ahead and hit the uh, outro for us, Anne, and all right, fade it's away. All right. outro time. Say Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow.